Hello, hello, Facebook Success Group. Uh, welcome, everybody. We have quite the uh, event today. We're so excited to have Ellen Shai Kuhn here with us today. Uh, I would say power revaluate user probably, uh, and very successful realtor and all around amazing person. And we are thrilled to have her with us today to drop her knowledge uh, with everybody. Uh, we hope she really helps you uh, leverage your evaluate data and just helps you with your business and to be the best realtor that you can be. So we're very excited to have her. Thank you so much for joining us today, Ellen. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. And as usual, we also have Ryan Dundeville with us, VP of BizDev. He's also in the house with us today. Thank you also for joining us today, Ryan. Always a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we're going to just kind of start out briefly. Uh, we've had Ellen on with us in the past, but for anybody that doesn't know Ellen, I'm just kind of going to give you the floor for a minute just to share a little bit about yourself and your background uh, and maybe a little bit about how you found or evaluate. I started out... Um well, in education, actually, as an educator, and then found real estate 28 years ago and have been doing it ever since. And um, the Revaluate tool is absolutely amazing. It's probably one of the best things I've ever added to my quill. So as far as being able to um, uh, get in contact with people, communicate, and be Johnny on the spot before anybody else is. So um, I came across you introduced you to our broker uh and now the company is using you and it's just it's been great so that's kind of the background awesome and, and it's more i can give you i've got two dogs one husband two daughters <laughs> <laughs> well i love hearing about the more i've always i've enjoyed getting to know you in the relationship and i think uh relationship building is really the key to this business right and goes a lot into what we're going to talk about today yes, um yeah. Um, Ryan, for those that don't know, why don't you share just a brief, I know most of our audience knows you, but just in case anybody's joining in today, if there's anything you want to share about yourself and your role here? I'm boring. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm just here because I'm lucky enough to work uh, with our larger accounts and get to introduce to people like Ellen and her broker and get to hear the success stories and just mastermind with different teams and brokers and brands and organizations that are leveraging our data and uh, absorb all of the what's working, what's not working so that people don't have to start from square one when they're uh, figuring out what to do with all this stuff. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Well, again, thank you guys for joining us and we'll jump right into it. Uh, Ellen has quite the tech stack and quite the different approach to being an agent. So all of these questions will really be based around her genius and what she brings to the table. Um, but it's a lot of questions that we've gotten from you guys. So I hope this brings value to you and we'll jump in. The first question, Ellen, is if somebody has just opened up their Evaluate account and they're saying they're feeling a little intimidated by the data, uh, where do you recommend they begin? What's the first thing they should do? You know, that's an interesting question because I think everybody's genius, as you used before, is different. It's really simple. Sure. It's just, you know, it's a numbers game if that's the way you want to look at it. You all have provided a great um, barometer for us when you talk about thresholds and scores and everything else. So I started by taking the scores and prioritizing them like I've done my other clients. So when I get new clients and my client base is all based on scores as it is. I do an A plus A, B, C, and D with my regular clients. So taking a threshold like this was very interesting. And I just concentrate on the ones in the beginning, I concentrated on the ones who were the most likely to move because that was, you know, where that's like the low hanging fruit and that's where you want to start. So I started there. I put together yep. a campaign to work with those people, which we can go over today. I mean, it's very simple. And then treated them the way I would treat somebody that I know almost, almost completely in the same program, same everything. Um, a little bit of a softer approach on the initial hello. Started though with the threshold and then saw how those things worked and worked my way down in the numbers with different ways to hit them. So that's, you know, mm -hmm. and those layers, it's like, it's a complete example of peeling the onion. I mean, you start right at the core um, with the highest scores 
and then you know work your way to the outside so it's easy peasy you just I, it can look pretty intimidating it really isn't and you can decide where to start wherever you want to start so that's the beauty of it is the right. information you have right um, uh, when you know. started when you started your account did you start with um your people you knew or people you didn't know or a combination of the two like what were the people that we started monitoring for you when you first got started so in the beginning, and I can tell you what I believe now, in the beginning, I started with um, a area that I wanted to farm and the information was fantastic. And in fact, I realized we should all be doing this with our clients, period, because it gives us intel that is wonderful. And it's an immediate reason to call people. So not too long after that, I added all my sphere of influence as well. And it's been amazing. And everybody in my office has now added at least, you know, their content, their sphere of influence is all in there because the information you get, I mean, if somebody hits a 60 or a 70 in my sphere of influence, that's a reason to call them. I mean, if you've already done business with them and you know them, it's like, you know, if you don't know if they're putting on a deck or going out of town, I mean, maybe you all can go over some of the criteria that you're watching. Whatever it is, though, it's a reason to call. And you don't have to say, I got a score. <laughs> and it's <not laughs> to call you. you just say, hey, what's going on? What's new? What are you doing to the house? Have you gone out of town? Play off of some of the criteria that you're using to see if they're going to have to relocate, if they're adding on because, you know, they're adding to their family or if they're repairing stuff because they are going to get ready to put it on the market. I mean, all of those things, you just play into the information that we know you're, you're monitoring for us. And it's just easy, easy, easy. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, that's so so smart with the people you know, especially like um, Katrina and I were on a call yesterday where we were talking to a newer client and saying like, you know, that score represents a life event, right? Like you don't know what it is, but if it's somebody you know, or even if it's someone you don't know, but like just asking the right questions, will get them to open up to tell you what that life event is. And if they don't say like, yes, I want to move today, it doesn't mean don't stay in touch with them. It means like maybe they haven't made that decision yet. And I use my own personal life example, which is, you know, my wife's due in January. We're going to have our third kid. And if when her score spiked to uh, 65, I can show it to people. Like I know when it happened. It happened at the end of April. If someone called me and said, hey, are you thinking of moving? I would have said, no, we're not thinking about moving. But thank you, you know, whatever. But if they asked me what was going on, and I was like, you know, a lot of those life events are the types of things that people are dying to share if someone asks the right question. Um, and if they had stayed in touch with me till now, I'll tell you right now that this house feels smaller with a third kid coming than it did six months ago. And definitely when we bought it, uh, I'd at least entertain looking at some houses to, for the right person who was sending them to us now. I mean, frankly, we are looking a little bit here and there, but um, the point being, uh, yeah, you want to get them talking. You want to have a conversation, be human, build a relationship and find out what's going on with them so that you can stay in touch and nurture and, and maintain contact as life keeps moving them in that direction. Right. That's right. And, you know, we have a little phrase for what you're going through, Ryan. We say too many feet for your square footage. <laughs> yeah, Aww. I know. 2,500 seems like a lot when it was one kid, but now with three and a dog, it <laughs> yeah. doesn't feel as big. <laughs> a lot of feet in that square footage. So, <laughs> uh, And Ellen, I love that you keep saying, you know, how easy it is and how simple it can be. And I think we, we like to look at things and feel overwhelmed. But, you know, when we first set up your account, your account wasn't even integrated and you still felt that it was so easy to kind of just cross reference and say, oh, this person has a high score. Oh, I'm just going to go over to my CRM and I'm going to go ahead and give this person a call. Uh, so I think a lot of times we kind of get in our own way a little bit and it's just kind of it's refreshing almost to hear you be like, you know, just don't be intimidated. Just take a breath. Just dive in view it for what it is and go with it. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, in our business, it's really interesting because we had this conversation as well. As realtors, we have the opportunity to do a lot. And, you know, being licensed and everything that we need to do to make sure transactions are happening and we're going in the right direction, those are all learned skills. They're learned. I mean, they're like a technician going through 
it, it's we learn the system. We learn how to set up a CRM. We learn how to read, reevaluate. We learn all those things. It's a, it's a, it's just a, the technical part that's easy. The hard part is getting that kind of intel that you give us, and not just doing doing the doing part, but being the different person with that information. And that's where the two come together. Where it's so. Um, important. So when we're talking about taking the route and, and I loved it and it was easy for me because it gave me um, a new field to play with. I mean, it was like, okay, now I get to send them these postcards, which we'll look at. And just, I like to make people laugh and see how people react to stuff. So if you look at it as a, a, a system, that's really easy to learn. The hardest part in, of anything that we do as realtors is being who we are, the humans that we are, and bringing that very personal thing to a, a business that does not have to be relational if people don't want it to. It can stay transactional, which would be horrible. I mean, our whole thing is to build relationships. So this gives us a little door to open that other people don't have if they don't have Revaluate that lets us know, okay, here's something that you can use your doing and your being to make a difference for someone. And that's, you know, that's pretty much where that, that's why it's so much fun. If you just take a little bite at a time. Uh, and speaking of fun, I think now's a great time to transition into another question we had. Uh, you've mentioned your mailers a few times here since we've been chatting. And uh, one of the questions we always get is, I don't love to make phone calls. Is there another way that we can connect with our database? And we actually really, recommend you know the omnipresent approach so we always recommend using forms of marketing besides calls and we've uh discussed with ellen a lot her philosophy around the soft touch before you know the hard phone call so why don't we kind of get into your mailers and your other forms of marketing that you like to to use ellen and if you'd like to let me know i'll show off one of your mailers for the audience which one would you like to start with you can start with um i think american gothic because it's easy to see where somebody would put their own head and then we can go to maryland Okay, so there I am. And it was very easy to put selling the farm. And yeah. if you, and there's a backside to it too, and I'm happy to share any of this information and what's on the back and you can use it or not use it. And my, my printer is happy to work with anybody who wants to stick their head on the male or female or both or none or you know, <laughs> whatever you want to do um, and um, use the back. And incidentally, that bottom part is no longer on the card because we don't have low interest rates anymore. So just so that you know, <laughs> that's an old version of the card. Um, so, um, and this is the thing about using Revaluate is when you send something like this to one person, they don't know that you're not sending it to the whole neighborhood. They don't know that you're not canvassing the whole street. And you can if you want to. When I, I have a, a whenever I do my postcards that I send to my sphere of influence, I always print a hundred or two hundred extra ones that I can use as I get new clients through Revaluate or any mm. any other place, you know, a referral or anything else. I'll pop it to them. So I got mm -hmm. I had a referral today happen to get a referral from um, a client with a friend of theirs who wants to list their home. And I had a talk with him on the phone. I'm going to meet him later in the week. And this postcard is already in the mail to him just to make them laugh. And in the, on the back, it says a little bit about, you know, what you want to do. Well, if you get a reevaluate score, it, you, you know, it's easy to pop something like this in the mail. They don't know that you're not doing everything and it, and it makes them laugh. So by the time they get from the mailbox, to the trash can to throw it away, which is the life of a postcard sometimes, <laughs> they will say, this realtor has a little bit of a different approach. And maybe they won't throw it away, especially if they're on your revaluate list at a higher number threshold ready to go. They're going to hold on to that. So that's the kind of piece where you're going to be uh, memorable and unforgettable. And you take an opportunity to show your value and you, then there you go. So if you take a postcard like this to start with, and then the next thing you send them is a market analysis, a CMA. I call it something different. I call it uh, a pinpoint price analysis because I want to do a little pattern interrupt. I don't want to call it the same thing that other realtors call it. And we can show that card in a minute. 
but then you can follow up with the market analysis or the pinpoint price analysis, whatever you want to call it. And it's just, you can write the letter and you can let them know that you know their name, but now you're showing your value. So you've shown them that you're human. Yep. You've, you've made a soft introduction of yourself and now you're going to show them that you have value. So you can either do something that talks about their neighborhood or their house or just their street, however it is you want to do it. It's very easy. And then they'll see it's you again. And then you can just continue to build on that. Um, and again, we'll talk about this as well, video emails, whatever it is that you want to do to let them see that you're different and you're bringing value to them that they need. All right. Uh, this is, I think, one of my favorite ones that you have sent over my way, Ellen. <laughs> the American Gothic. Can you see? Oh, I think we lost her for a second. Oh. Do, 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 do. Okay, there. Here she is. She's back. Like she never <laughs> left. People at once. So yeah, that one's a really fun one. And obviously it gets people's attention. Whenever I send this to my sphere or to new people, I get back a lot of texts who, that have shot the picture of the postcard and they put underneath it, LOL. I mean, it's just. <laughs> yeah, That's amazing. So, amazing. 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 <laughs> Um, um, so, so oh, are, you, are you hearing the echo? Are you guys, are you guys hearing the echo? Yeah, I'm hearing the echo. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm gonna go. But not Ellen, again. Ellen sounds good. Oh, okay. So, uh, do you want it's something to... like Katrina said? We can just chat while she fixes herself. <laughs> okay, that's good. So so uh, let's talk strategy a little bit on. So when you sent, so is your, uh, the way you're using these postcards, is it um, when someone's score reaches a certain number, then you send the first one and then the pinpoint analysis, I think you called it, and then the second one? Or what does that cadence look like for you in your personal strategy? It, well, a little bit of it depends on whether or not I get a response from the first phone, you know, from the first phone. Yep. So if somebody gets in touch with me right away, then it's kind of, it's different. The thing to remember when you're doing all of this is, again, you want to be memorable, unforgettable, and show your value. We're going for an appointment. I mean, that's what we're looking for in this is an appointment. So as soon as you feel like you, it, once you have that, you, you can continue in a different way. I mean, once you're going to be standing in front of them in their house, you don't have to, I don't want to say you don't have to worry about this anymore. You always have to be consistent with your communication with people. It's just that now reevaluate, open the door, and now you're going in. So depending on what you're looking for, I would send something that brings a smile first, then maybe that pinpoint price, pinpoint price analysis card, which also says, I can do a pinpoint price analysis and a room by room review. Now I can't do that if I'm not standing in their house. So if they want a room by room review, because you know, you go into somebody's house to do a listing and they'll say, do I have to replace the carpet? What should I do with this flooring? Oh my gosh, look at the holes in that wall. When I take the pictures down, do I take the nails out? I love it. You know, all those things. And you have to be there to see that. So I kind of mm -hmm. plant a little seed by saying I can throw a pinpoint price analysis at you, which any of us can do via computer, but I can't, but I can't do the room by room review if I'm not standing there. So there's a line on that postcard. And again, you can show it later or send it to people or whatever you want the thinking about moving what's next um, that kind of plants a seed that maybe I should be standing in front of you now because I can do these things. And then if I don't get a response after that, I can send the market analysis to them, not via email. I like to send it, you know, via mail and handwritten envelope and something that's different. What I've had a lot of success with is um, the video emails. 
And that's, Mm -hmm. I mean, that's easy to do with what you give us. And you can either do a video email that comes across as evergreen, which means it's not really targeted at one person. It's talking about, hey, Mm -hmm. everybody, Mm -hmm. I wanted to talk to you today about the market. My name is Ellen Shake. And and you're just sending it to reevaluate people or you're just sending it to that one person. Or if you want to send it, hey, Ryan, um, I had somebody interested they drove down your street and they loved the way your the front of your home looked and i just wanted to get in touch with you and now the thing about that is ryan might say that's kind of creepy how'd you get my (laughs) so you know it's never wrong to say i'm a realtor and we have resources that you know when somebody wants to find out about a home we have resources you know that we can use to help our clients out that's always an okay thing to do and you, yeah. and you know, you've got information on them that they don't know, you know, I mean, they just yeah. don't know. So um, it's just a nice way. It's to funny. Be- it's funny how people forget that, you know, 10 years ago, you used to get everybody's phone number delivered in a giant book to your front doorstep once a year. And now people yep. are like, how'd you get my number? It's like, well, it's, you know, there, there are still public, what, what one out of four times that my phone rings, it's got somebody's name that pops up on the caller ID. That means that you can find their number if you're looking for it. Right. Right. So you just have, <clears throat> excuse me, you just have to be comfortable. And and that's part of just shaking it out and doing a little Zen and, you know, looking at the list and saying, okay, I'm going to have fun. And that's really, that's really what's involved with it. Um, am I still echoing? <laughs> yes. You are. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Terrible. terrible. I was just curious um, if, if you dabbled in text at all, because we talk about texting with our clients a lot, and if you like to send regular text or video through text as well. I, I will do both texts. What I'm, uh, uh, what I'm finding is people are getting a little bit cautious about opening their texts if they don't you know, know who it's coming from or... So it's hard to send a video. Well, it's not hard to send a video text. I always make sure that when I send the text, they know. Oh, Katrina, you cut her out. Bring her back. Can you hear me? Yeah, you killed Ellen mid-sentence. Something's not working. (laughs) Ellen, are you there? Please excuse us as we are experiencing some technical difficulties in our live stream. (laughs) We don't normally have technical difficulties in our live stream, so I'm just going to fill some space while you tinker with stuff and get it all fixed. For those of you who have been watching throughout this entire live stream, you are getting the courtesy of me filling space. Ellen, you're back, and oh, Katrina's gone now. Go. I don't know. We don't. We do these a lot, and we have never had this much technical difficulty. I don't, I don't know what's going on today. The, it's Halloween, something about planets and stars or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. All right, well... So. You were talking about texting, though, and you were talking about people not wanting to open their text if they don't know the person and making it difficult to deliver video text was where you got cut off right about that. As long as I can deliver something text wise, that has my name on it, that they know it's coming from me. And that's why it's really important when you get a texting service. If you I, I don't use a texting service where I can send a gazillion at one time because then True. they don't know your number. So. Um, you know, if people have me listed in their, you know, contacts, then <clears throat> I'll, I'll just be there for them, uh, you know, and, but I'll start with, hey, Ellen, shake in here, and then the text will go on. Yeah, that's a good idea, because that makes it more like you're not a robot, you're a real person. And if you're not right. using a service, then you are a real person. So, <laughs> you know, right. it's good for people to know that. Um, with your mailers and your outreach efforts with the emails and the mailers do you have that set up in an automated system or do you manually track and and 
implement each of those steps? I So that's a very good question because I know we can API revaluate into lots of system. I use a system where I... I don't have an API that goes straight in. I would recommend if you, you know, if you're starting out, you do that. I watch what comes in with Revaluate. I have a way to categorize them in my system so I don't miss anything. And my my system, and I think you can do it with lots of systems, monitors how many times I've contacted them when I've put in that I've done a note, you know, all of that stuff. And they'll pop them up again on the time frame that I've prescribed for them to be popped up again. So perfect. So it's automatically triggering you, but it's not automatically like sending out the mailers or any of that stuff. You're doing that more manually. Triggering me because the other thing too is (coughs) excuse me. (coughs) We had a really hot day yesterday and all everybody's walking around with allergies here. So I apologize. Um the uh, the a lot of times you'll be watching a house and when I When I contact somebody, I pull it up on my MLS to make sure I'm not crossing a line. I mean, I'm very, I'm very ethical about all of this. So, you know, if I see a house, I'll go in and look on the MLS. If it's not listed, then, you know, it's open. If it is, then I'm not going to touch it. Just know that those people, if they're, if the people are doing something to get ready to list, Everybody knows 48 million realtors. So they may already have signed paperwork with someone or committed to someone. So in the first week to 10 days, when I'm kind of hitting them with two or three things, trying to get a feeling for them. And I'd say probably it's more like 14 to 18 days that I'll send three or four things out or do three or four things to try and prompt a response. I'm watching the MLS as well, because if they pop up on the screen, the last thing I want is a realtor that's calling me to say, what are you doing? I mean, they're half. Sure. So. No, that's really smart. Um, And that's something that we don't talk about a lot, but uh, I know from my time as an ISA, that was one of the first questions we had to ask when we were making calls was like, you know, are you currently listed or under are you currently listed or working with listed or working with another agent so you could identify who not to step on the toes of right um, right so- and and to your point that changes in those two in, over time so like they may not be today but you want to make sure you're taking a look as you're continuing to engage down the road well this i can tell you that revaluate is strong enough and good enough that Out of my list every month, there's probably three or four homes that go listed that are on my list of people that I've sent something to or started with. So, and, you know, I I want my clients to keep loyal, you know, their loyalty to me as well. So bravo to the people that have their people going back to them. You know, that's what we all want. And there's enough business to go around for all of us. But again, the intel that Revaluate gives, um, it's just a great opportunity for us to differentiate who we are. And that's why it's so important to understand the system and know how to use a system and be a good technician with a system. It's also so important to do things, you know, and again, the Marilyn Monroe and the American Gothic might not have been for you. The one liner is much more conservative (laughs) and, you know, it's just a, just you need to take the opportunity that we're getting, even with our own clients, and make sure that we're differentiating ourselves from what other people would do. So I don't particularly want to send a postcard that says um, this this house is listed, you know, new list. It's not that I wouldn't send a new listing postcard. It's just that I'd also take that opportunity to, to send something else as well. Yeah, here's the one. I've been thinking about moving. How do I start? It's a big oversized yellow postcard. It's like six by nine. And then on the back, and it's okay if we can't show the back, but uh, there it's coming up and it's a little bit um, small, but the, in the blue letters, it talks about the pinpoint price analysis and the room by room review. And it, you know, so that it's a little bit more, it's a, a more traditional card than the other ones. It's giving them a lot of information. And it's giving them there and it's giving them value. And again, I will listen carefully to your story. And then I, so 
I like to put the things in blue um, or in a different color that I want people to see. You see that I've highlighted that I bolded the word simple a couple of times, but I put it in blue there. So they're going to see, listen carefully to your story, pinpoint price valuation, room by room review, and it's simple and then confidential and free. I mean, they see all those things. They it should appeal to them. I, you know, I'd like to make something that's compelling for them. And then again, yeah. this is all something that I'm happy to share with anybody. Those are like your, your, your subtle, unique value propositions. The things that, you know, this is what I'm offering to the community. To, and you want to make sure that that catches their eye versus the, the stuff that everybody, you know, the rest of it's kind of filler, right? You can't right. just put those words because you need to put the filler in to make it English, <laughs> but you know, highlight the important highlight the important stuff for them, um, and I really love the you know the being yourself piece of the puzzle that you're that you're touching on a bunch is like it's so important and it's so underplayed in a lot of uh, people's technology and systems because they just want plug and play done for you on like just set it and forget it type stuff, but um, leveraging different systems and tools is only one piece of the puzzle. And if you take out the human element when you're doing that, then you're really shortchanging yourself and you're going to miss a lot of opportunity to connect with people. Um, you said earlier about how it can be a transactional business, but it should be a relationship business. And one of the things, um, the differences that I like to highlight for people between a lead and a high revaluate score is a lead is designed to be transactional in nature. You can go buy leads and you can run your business that way and you can do that, but you're, at the beck and call of the lead generator because you're not growing your business, you're growing their business and they're just using you to transact. Right. Whereas what we're doing is putting those opportunities in front of you to build your business and build that relationship and create those, you know, those ongoing lifetime value relationships that'll keep, keep feeding you more opportunity as you go. Um, well, and Ryan, just to say one thing to you and Bravo on this, you, the information that you do glean to pass on are life events. I mean, the, it is something that's a life event. So that's important for us all to remember as well. And, you know, one of the things I say a lot, and I sent it in the email today that I sent out, and, and um, if whoever's doing the magic of the postcards and putting things on the screen. If you want to show the email, you can. One of my slogans or taglines is meeting you where life happens, because that's what we do in real estate. I mean, just like you have too many feet for your square footage right now. If somebody has some, God forbid, somebody gets diagnosed with something that's going to be a physical challenge for them. They got to move. You know, they, they can't go up and down to the second floor for, Bedrooms and bathrooms anymore, that's a life event. If somebody gets a job transfer, that's a life event. If somebody's getting married or getting divorced, I mean, when you think about the clients who we serve, there's usually, yeah, there's email, there's usually a life event, and there's Katrina. There's usually there's Katrina. And <laughs> a, a life event that's going on. So this is, I send out something every Tuesday morning. I release it at four o'clock in the morning. I have tested the times and by five o'clock in the morning, I send out 500 of them over a hundred people by five in the morning have read this. So I don't know what people are doing up between four and five. Reading <laughs> and this is just, um, this is through a service called a Weber. Um, and you can look it up a Weber.com. Very easy to use tracks, everything. It's, it's really a great service. I don't know if you can go up and down on it. I start mine with my grandson every time. Um, I can tell you that I did one a few weeks ago where it was me with my grandson and more people opened it because I think they saw me, but I get a lot of opens. I send out 500 and I get over 200. I get between two, 230 and 250 to, that open it every week. So to have those many people that are opening it is, is wonderful. And I got, that's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's a great response. And I've already gotten a lot of emails back today about um, this just talks about changes in your life. And so this first part doesn't, it, it I ended with, um, you know, he made a purposeful observation and made a change. But then the rest of the email talks about the changing of the seasons and how. 
Katrina, you got too crafty and you kind of went off again. <laughs> Oh, there you are. <laughs> I get I get emails as responses from any from people that I send that to every week. This week it was loaded. I mean, it just I started getting them all over the place. So that's another thing that you can do, and it's certainly something that you can. It, it's was so it's so easy for me to plug my revaluate people into that list. I mean, it's just an email that goes out. So when it's talking about how your home fits into your life. So it it's when I show a house, I talk to people about not just looking at floor plans, but thinking about the memories you're going to make in there and knowing that where you are, you're going to have tooth fairies and Thanksgivings. And, and that's not something that we all talk about and we should, because when we sell a house to someone, it has a price tag on it and we're concerned about how the flow is and if the backyard's big enough. I mean, and those are all important things. When we get called back to resell that house years later, that house is now priceless to that family because of what's happened in the walls, not because anything else changed. And sure. we remember that at the front end and this tool, Revaluate, allows us from the very beginning to remember that it's all about life and something happening in the people with the people that we're, who we're talking to that are doing that and to be memorable and stand out from the beginning. So I hope that makes sense. And oh, it makes perfect sense. And I love it. It's, it's, uh, it's a perfect summation of, of what it's all about, right? Like, yeah, uh, making it about life events from the beginning makes it so that you can, you know, we're all in sales. <laughs> like, I'm in like I've been in sales my whole life. Real estate is all about being sales, and right. but in salespeople are geared differently than the general public. And sometimes we get so wrapped up in the things that we think are important that we forget about the things that the the consumer, the 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 client thinks are important. And to your point, like when you go into it with the right frame, that something's going on in their life that's making them need to move. It might be good, might be bad. You don't know until you start that dialogue. Um, it gives you a different framework to work around in a conversation and in the relationship and in the whole process than just like, okay, they want them. They either want to buy for the cheapest or sell for the most. Like, <laughs> Not everybody cares about that at the point that, like you said, you know, the, this house means everything to them, but they need to move because X, Y, Z is happening. Uh, X, Y, Z is probably more important than the stuff that we think is important at that point. Well, and they don't know. Most of the time, our clients don't know to think about the other things. They don't think about what happens. You know, I don't know if you've thought about this, but when we're, we're, we're in the initial process, and this is when you're working with buyers, not sellers. When you're in the initial process, you're looking at houses. Let's go look at houses. Let's go look at houses. Da, 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 da. Oh, I, I don't ever hear anybody say, I want to go look at homes. Because what happens is it's a house until it's yours and then sure. when you buy it it's a home so you don't go look at homes we're looking at houses it's not anything but a house until you put yourself in it so that's a big transition and if we remind them from the beginning yes we're looking at houses remember you're going to have please remember you're going to have proms and thanksgivings and tooth fairies and uh, 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 all those things are going to be in here yes we're looking at houses but remember you're going to bring home your first dog or you're going to bring home your first cat or you're going to bring home your eighth cat or, you know, something something's <laughs> going to happen in there that it's not a house anymore to you. It's your home. So if we go into it from the beginning like that and we know that what we're getting from you is the information that is a life event thing. I mean, it's just all very incredible. It's it gives us such an opportunity. So thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Katrina, wherever you are. <laughs> She's the eye in the sky at this point. Well, um, I think we are coming up on time, Ellen. We've been chatting for about a little over half an hour, 40 minutes, and that's awesome. And um, I just wanted to give you an opportunity to, if uh, if someone wants to reach out to you, you mentioned that you'd be willing to share your templates or um, if they have questions on anything that we talked about, how would they get a hold of you? Uh, you know, do you want people to get a hold of you or not? Well, yeah, <laughs> sure. Of course, I'd love to share. 
Um, you can get me by uh, text or cell, and it's area code 502, and then 417-7625, and it's 417-ROCK, R-O-C-K. Um, so you can re remember it that way. And then it's E-Shaken, so um, you just take, there you go, thank you. And then it's E-Shaken <laughs> at Gmail. So just make sure that you spell shaken the way it's spelled in front of you, which most people say shakun, but it's shaken, eshaken at gmail.com. Simple. As, as you can tell, I like things to be easy peasy, simple, easy to do. There you go. And um, I, I promise you, Revaluate is a powerful, one of the most powerful tools that I have and one of the easiest to use. So anybody who's feeling like it's not easy, Call me. I'm happy to help. Email me. I'm awesome. happy to help. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm so glad we were introduced and we've had so many opportunities to chat. I'm glad we were able to bring this to the community today. And uh, I'll do Katrina's normal wrap up. Um, we will be back, I believe, in two weeks with our next AMA for anyone who watched this far. Thank you for bearing with us through our technical difficulties today. I promise if you're here right now, it was worth sticking around through the technical difficulties to hear the gems that Ellen dropped in the conversation that we just had. And uh, we'll toss links to your phone number and email in the ch in the comments in the Facebook group. Uh, if anybody needs to get a hold of me, revaluate.com, or you can just at me in the Facebook group. Happy to chat about anything as well. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you again for joining us today and have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Thanks for having me.